and welcome to the Garments Engaged Crochet Podcast, where I chat about crochet garments and other yarny things. I am Michelle Ferguson, the crochet pattern designer of Two Brothers Blankets. You can find me at twobrothersblankets.com or on Facebook and Instagram at Two Brothers Blankets and right here on YouTube. I hope you guys are having a good week. So for events and happenings, we don't have too much going on this week. I do have the Nova Shrug re-release, I guess you would call it. I have remade the Nova Shrug um, pattern in a different yarn and I wore it over my Easter dress. Um, my Easter dress was like a little spaghetti strap. Um, so I wanted a little something to cover with and that's what I used. And so um, I will be showing that off this week and just sort of putting it, bringing it back to light. It's a little bit of an older pattern. Uh, I think 2017, maybe early 2018. So you'll get to see that new reveal. Um, as far as anything else, I don't think there's too much going on just yet. Um, testers are still working away at that shawl, so it will be coming soon and I will be revealing the name of it um, soon as well. So at the time of this filming, I might have already done it by the time I <laughs> by the time this publishes, but um, so if you already know, you know. So um, that's what we've got going on. Today I want to chat with you about, not necessarily garments, but about crochet designers. I want to share five unusual ways that you can support your favorite crochet designers or knit designers also. Um, and it's more, it's like five ways that you wouldn't think about. Like it's not weird, like weird, unusual, but like just, some some ways that you might not necessarily think of um, think of that are being supportive to these designers. So let's get into it. Number one is tell them when you like their work. If they post a whip progress photo, if they share a design that you really like, um, talk about a design you really like, whatever. If you see it and you really like it, take just a moment to comment. Oh, I really like that. That's so pretty. What a pretty color. Anything like that because. I feel like most designers, all the designers that I've talked to, we can be really hard on ourselves, so it's normal for anyone. And anyone, like, likes, most people like getting a good compliment, right? No matter what, if they make something or working on something, a compliment just means so much to that person. So to have our followers, our audience, whatever you want to call it, uh, tell us they really like something that we are working on or have made just makes our day. I just, I know it does mine and I know it does other designers um, as well. So just like a genuine comment that tells them that you really like what they're working on or what they've made can go a long way. Um, number two, Tag and share. So if you make something from one of your favorite designers' um, patterns, tag them, put, and you're posting it, you're sharing it online, um, post the picture, tag them, and share with others that, you know, and let them know who the designer was, what the pattern is, that not only lets the designer see um, your project that you've made from their pattern. I know when I first, especially when I first started out, just like with my testers and whatever, just to see that someone could make something from what I wrote, like blew my mind. Like it just, oh, they can do it, yay! You know, like so, um, so it lets them see it when you tag them in it. It also um, shows up on their page. Like I think if it's Facebook, it'll show up on their page. Um, Instagram, it'll show up in the other little grid of tagged photos. Um, and it makes it shareable for them so they could share your work as well. And it's a great way to advertise. It's a great way to market a pattern. Oh, look, so-and-so made it in this color, you know, like stuff like that. So that's a super easy way to um, support them just by tagging them when you post a picture of your work that you've made from their pattern. Number three recommend their patterns to others. So if you really like their patterns and you see someone in a group that's like, I need a slouch hat for whatever. And I, I know I see this all the time in Facebook groups um, and Facebook crochet groups. They'll be like, I need a men's sweater or I need a baby blanket, whatever. Spam me with your favorite baby blankets. 
take a second, grab that link of your favorite baby blanket pattern from your favorite designer or whatever, and share it and recommend it. Oh, I've made this. It's great. It's a great pattern, whatever. Um, that helps spread the word about your favorite designers. Share, you know, get the word out about patterns. Um, and you know how we all are. We all like to know that it works and that somebody else has made it or used it or whatever. Um, and that's for all things. So like Amazon, I always have to look at the reviews, right? So if you can recommend a certain blanket pattern or whatever, when someone's asking, um, that's super helpful because we as designers are running around trying to get all the things done. We don't have a lot of time to go in and be like, oh, I have this pattern or I have that pattern. Plus to have a customer um, or follower recommend it, it just means so much more. So that is number three, recommend their patterns to others. Um, number four, and I got my little notes over here. That's why I keep looking. <laughs> um, number four, thank them when they offer free stuff. Um, so this might step on a few toes. I don't know, but I like to do blog hops. I like to do patterns on my blog for free. There's nothing more disheartening than offering something for free and not getting one thank you. Like I could charge for that pattern um, and I decided to put it on my blog or I could not give it away for free for 24 hours to let whoever wants it get it and do whatever they want to with it because we all know that's what happens a lot of times. Um, they send it, you know, give it to scrapper sites or whatever um, to offer a freebie for 24 hours or whatever and nobody say thank you. It's super disheartening. It's super like, ugh, really? Like what was all that for? Kind of feeling. So if a designer offers a freebie, whether that's a permanent freebie or a limited time only freebie, even, you know, sales or discounts, just take a second and thank them. Just, it would be so nice to just say thank you. <laughs> um, and it would make us happy and makes us feel good and makes us want to do more freebies. <laughs> um, I just feel like it's, it's just nice to do that, to say thank you. Um, Cause like I said, we could charge for it. We could not do the limited time only ones, um, not do sales, whatever. And so it's just, it's just nice. It's just nice. Okay. Um, and then number five is to leave a review or a thoughtful comment. So on Ravelry, you can, on the listing, you can comment and you can add your project. And when you can add your project, you're give, able to give it like stars or whatever for like difficulty, whatever. I don't know exactly all the listings, but um, so for Ravelry, you can do that. You can add your project, which is also tagged, tagged, I guess, to that pattern listing. So people can see your project there on Ravelry. Um, and see that you were able to make it and that you liked it. And you can leave a little review, you can write a paragraph or however many, you can write multiple paragraphs. There's like a whole section where you can just type your own words um, and tell what you thought of it, tell how it went, tell if you changed anything, whatever. So that's a great, great way to support your desi the designer. If you really like the pattern and um, it worked out well for you, whatever, leave a review, you can do that on Ravelry, and then Etsy you do like, you do a review like you would a Amazon review. You just give it however many stars and you write whatever you wanna write about it. I think you can add pictures as well. So if you really appreciate the pattern and it turned out well, um, just take a moment to review it. Maybe when you post your picture of it to, and tag the person, maybe add it to Ravel your Ravelry projects as well or just leave a review on Etsy wherever you got it. Um, that, that helps any business, a good review. Um, so, and we are a business, crochet pattern designers are a business, whether they give away free patterns or paid patterns. I have a whole blog post on this. Um, we're all trying to make an income with these patterns one way or the other. So um, it's, 
reviews are important. We want good reviews. We want five-star reviews. Um, we want people to leave reviews. So that is the fifth way that you can leave, I mean, can you support a designer? And I'm pretty sure all of those were free, right? None of, I mean, unless you buy the buy a pattern and then review and all that, that costs you money. But actually doing the things is free. It doesn't take much money or time. So those are five ways. Tell them you like their work, tag them and share when you post your projects um, with their patterns, recommend them in, or you know, put recommend their patterns in groups and leave their links and whatever. Never share a whole pattern, please. <laughs> That's copyright. Please don't do it. Um, and then thank them when they offer free stuff and leave them reviews on Etsy Ravelry wherever you purchase the pattern. So I hope those tips are just something that you you might think about next time you make a new pattern or whatever for the designer. We appreciate it so much. We are human. We are not perfect. Our patterns are not going to be 100% perfect all the time. Typos. I mean, I've had pat patterns tested and still my mistakes were in them by the time I published it. So um, give us some grace and just support us in any way you can. We really appreciate it. Um, support your favorite small businesses, whether they're designers or not. Now more than ever, it's important to do that. So I hope those uh, thoughts are helpful for you. Okay, now it is time for my whip bag. I gotta grab it over here. I didn't pull it up like I was supposed to, like usual. Um, okay, so I'm still working on the Sarasota tank top, um, but I showed that to you last week, so I'm not gonna show that to you again. I also started another remake because I just don't listen to my own advice. <laughs> and um, yeah, I like to like wait to the last minute till when I have to have things done, I guess, because I student still need to work on the body bell sun hat and I need to start on a new design, but whatever, it is what it is. Um, so I, so the Derby Duster vest is a pattern I came out in 2017. Um, I like it. It's been, it's a big hit. Um, it's a, one of my best sellers. It is, so it's made in one piece, worked in rows. It's very customizable. You can make it as long or as short as you want. Um, but I don't love the way the armholes are worked. Um, I mean, I've even had like a few people like give me a bad review because of it, because the armholes are a little weird and difficult to create. And I don't really even like the way it looks in the back uh, with the armholes. So I am remaking a Derby Duster vest in this beautiful pink. It's pink, but it's called Baby Red. It's like a hot pink, um, dark pink. Baby Bee Sweet Delight yarn. I got this stuff on clearance for $1.32 at Hobby Lobby like two years ago. So it's been sitting in my stash for a long time. And I figured let's use it. So I only have two balls of matching dye lots for this one. So I might not get, it might not become a duster vest, like all the way to my ankles, but I'm gonna try to make it as long as I can. And I'm gonna try to rework these, the armholes more like the um, summer stroll vest to where it splits and then you like seam the shoulders at the top. Um, I think that it might be a little bit easier to understand and look better also, like especially in the back. I didn't like the look of the back. So I'm gonna work on that. This is gonna be one of those as I have time, cause like I said, I need to get on my stuff that needs to be done, um, but it's cute and I really like this color. Good summer color, I think. So that is what I am working on this week on and off as I finish up some other things and start some other things. So, um, okay, I want to do a brutally honest review, but it's not yarn. <laughs> um, like I said, I, last week I've been slacking a little on washing and drying my yarns that I'm supposed to be reviewing because I think that's an important part of um, my review is how they wash up and all that. So I am not reviewing a yarn today because I don't have one that's washed and dried up for you. Um, so I'm going to review my favorite 
crochet hook. Um, I have made the switch to Ferrell's Streamline Crochet Hooks um, about a year ago, I wanna say. Maybe not quite a year ago. I switched. I used to use the Hobby Lobby ones. Do I have one here? No. Um, they had like a wooden handle and then a long metal um, hook part. And I've, I used those for years from the time I started crocheting until just last year. And then last year I hurt my shoulder. Pretty sure it was un, um, not crochet related. I think I did it working out. But I hurt my shoulder and my arm and hands and wrist would kill me also. Um, just hurt so bad. I think that was crochet related. If you remember last year it was 2020 and we were in quarantine for a long time and I crocheted a lot, like a lot, a lot. So I feel like I just wore my hands down and I remember my, my thumb, the tip of my thumb would hurt and my fingers and my wrist um, and then even sometimes down the forearm. So plus my shoulder on top of all that. So I decided to give Furl's crochet hooks a try. Um, I had gotten some some, oh, I actually have it right here. Let me see if I can grab it. It's a Odyssey hook. Uh, I don't see it now. An Odyssey hook in my drawer. Um, and a Streamline hook to try a, like two years ago, two or three years ago. And at the time I was like, nah, I got my hooks that I use all the time. I like them, da, da, da. So I found the Streamline, it was in the Ebony, um, that I had and I gave it a try and I decided, oh, this works, I can I can do this. And so I bought two more. And then two more turned into about 20 more. <laughs> I don't know how many I have actually, but I have a lot. I do have, I have a picture I put in my stories last year after I'd gotten into them um, with all of them like in my hand and it was a bunch. So I don't, and I've since lost one or two and replaced those. So <laughs> I don't know how many I have now, but, um, and then I became an affiliate for them. So I am an affiliate. Um, if you make a purchase from my Furls link, you will, I will get a commission from it, but I am an affiliate because I love them. So I'm going to give you my review there and it's not all good. Like it's not all, it's not a 10 out of 10, but I'm going to let you know what I think. Um, so I solely use the Furl Streamlines. I have not used the Odysseys much, so I cannot review those. I want to look into them, but I feel like they're going to be heavy. And that's one of the things I love about the Streamline wood ones is they are so stinking light. So they have three different wood kinds. I guess it's, I mean, it is wood, but three different kinds. They have this one, and now I can't think of the name can't remember. It's the lightest one. <laughs> and then they have teak, which is this one. This one is probably my favorite. It's just a nice, looks like a stained wood. And then they have ebony, which is really dark, black-ish. Um, so that's the streamlined wood. These are the cheapest ones you're going to get. And actually this lightest one is cheapest. Then this one's like a dollar more than this one, I think. Or maybe these two are the same price. I'm not positive. Um, but I originally started with just the Ebony's and then I gave these ones a try. I will say that like this is the lightest and the cheapest and that's why. Um, and then this is just teeny tiny bit heavier and then this is a little bit heavier. So they have these three options for wood and then they have the streamline swirl option. Um, this is made with a different material, it's not wood. It's like, it feels like plastic, but it's not plastic either. Maybe something, I mean, it's a little bit stronger than plastic. I don't know, I will have to look. But they have the streamline swirl and they have the streamline swirl in all different kind of cool colors. I think this is like cookies and cream or something, mocha, I don't know. But um, they have a lot of different cool ones. They just came out with a new one that's really pretty. It's called Pisces. Um, I really like it. Um, so this, and this is just slightly heavier than these. So my favorites are the teak ones. I've got two right here that I really like. Um, they're light, very, very, very lightweight. Um, and I just like the, the wood color. Now the thing is that I don't love about these, and I've heard, 
um, happen. I've had one happen. They're wood, so they can like split, they can break, they can get like slivers. Um, for the most part, I mean, I've had this one for a while. It's perfectly fine. I feel like it would have to be like some, like a manufacturer error almost to make it really split unless you were like really rough on it or something and it broke on its own. Um, and they come, since they're wood, they, they look different. Like they come in different like shades and stuff. Like it's not just, they're all gonna look the same. So that's, there's that. I think the wood messing up a little bit is what turns people off for the most part to them. Like if it's splintering, I mean that, you don't wanna crochet with that. That's gonna mess up your yarn and all that. Um, so that can be an issue. But like I said, these are the cheapest. Um, well, this one is. And then you have this. I think these are 17 or 17.50, the teak color um, or wood. So that's the cheapest you're gonna find on their website. These are a little bit more, they're $22, but you're not gonna have any issue with like breakage and splittage and splinters and all that. So that's nice about that. And then these are slight, these are really nice. The only thing about these is like this one, I don't know if you can see it. It's a little discolored. It wasn't like that when I first got it. It was all black when I first got it. So it's like wear and tear, I guess. And it is like right where I would, um, put my fingers to crochet. So I don't know if that turns you off to them. I guess that's why, but they're my favorite. Let me tell you what they've done for my hands. Um, I started using them. I found that for the most part, my gauge and my tension was the same as with the other ones. Cause I was a little bit worried about that. My hand pain and thumb pain and um, wrist pain went away completely. And it is not returned at all. Um, every now and then if I'm working like a difficult stitch, like a cable stitch or something like that, my thumb will hurt a little right at the joint, the knuckle and like the tip top every now and then, but not often, not very often. And I usually just stop. And so after about a month of physical therapy with my shoulder, that pain went away and so now I am pain free and I credit Furl's crochet hooks, streamlined wood hooks to that, at least for my hands, my fingers and my wrists. Um, for these, they're so smooth that they just kind of go through the yarn and I don't have to have a tight grip on them. Like I don't have to, like I can just kind of very easily like just barely hold them and I think that's what helps a ton. I just don't need a tight grip on them. Um, now, like I said, depending on the, that's why I think for like cable stitches and all that, I have to hold a little bit more because I'm going all over the place. Maybe not that much. That was a little dramatic, but um, that's why it hurts just a little in my thumb. But for the most part, my, I mean, my hand pain is gone. My finger pain is gone. I can crochet for a lot longer than I used to and still not get pain. So that is why I really love these hooks. Um, and I know they're a little pricey compared to like, like I think my Hobby Lobby ones that I used were like $4.99 at the most, $3.99. So they're a lot more than um, the ones you can get at Walmart and Hobby Lobby and all that. But they're worth it to me. Like they just, they help so much. Um, and unless you get one that like breaks or splits um, or causes a splinter, they last a long time too. I haven't had, like I said, I had one that is a little like splintery at the top, um, but I had, that's the only one. Like I've only had one and I've been using them for almost a year. Most of them are probably about that old too because I bought most of them right as I was getting into using them and I, cause I wanted all the sizes. So most of them are almost a year old and I haven't had any issues with them except for like the one. And if you're into more like of a, I can't remember what it's made out of, but not wood um, and like colorful, um, they have these streamlined swirls and they're really nice. So I'm gonna give these a nine out of 10, not a 10 out of 10, but they are some of my favorites now. I would recommend that you give them a try, um, buy one or maybe enter to win one if there's a giveaway somewhere or a coupon code you might wanna use to try. Um, and then um, see what you think. Because like I said, we're not, we're not all gonna have the same preferences when it comes to hooks and we hold our, you know, we all hold our hooks differently and whatever. So they might not work for you. They might not be something you like, or you might like their Odyssey hooks better. Um, their Odyssey hooks are like metal at the top 
and something at the bottom, I don't know. But they're really pretty too. They're they're solids. They have all different colors and all that. Um, they're a little bit different and they're a little bit more expensive. So, but maybe they work better for you. But for me, these really, really work well. I really like the wood ones. They're so lightweight that I, that really helps. Um, but these also, I use these. If I don't have the hook size for these, I'll use one of these most of the time. So. Both are great. Both are some of my favorite hooks. Um, if you haven't tried one yet, I would recommend giving it a try. So that is my Brutally Honest Crochet Hook review. <laughs> so that's all I have for you guys today. I um, will be back next week with more, with crochet garment stuff again um, for you guys and another Brutally Honest Yarn review. I promise to get on the ball and wash some yarn. <laughs> I'll see you guys next week. Have a great week.